Hi everybody, I'm Brad. Uh, so uh, even with all these slides, when I rehearsed uh, yeah, uh, yesterday night, uh, came out a little bit early. So uh, my plan is to talk slower, but also you are all welcome to just pitch in with a question or a comment at any time during the presentation. It won't bother me, I swear. Webster's Dictionary defines component as a constituent part or ingredient. This is a very general definition, as lots of things are parts of a larger whole. So we must mean something more specific when it comes to web work, or do we? So a component isn't most of the other words in the dictionary. Thank you, I appreciate your time today. Um, Classic misdirect. So, why is there something rather than nothing? What's our purpose? What does it mean to lead a meaningful life? What are things and how do we define them? So, this guy Plato, he said, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, there's like this like perfect example of an apple, like out in heaven, that all the earth apples are just trying to be like. Um, so if you want to know more about that, you can uh, Wikipedia uh, platonic idealism or the theory of forms. Um, so some of the earliest thought on the nature of our world and how we can conceptualize objects and concepts leads inextricably to there being an apple in the spirit realm. However, some time has passed since Plato, uh, and other folks have weighed in. So the main concept from this wall of text is that you can try to describe a thing or concept, or try to give enough examples that the description is implied. So uh, if you describe something with too little detail, then your definition of an apple might accidentally include pears. But if you describe something too tightly, then like speckled green apples might get the boot. Uh, so it's a tough balancing act. Similarly, a few examples uh, might lead your reader to like a murky understanding of what an apple is, whereas a huge list of examples like this one uh, could be overwhelming and unhelpful. Uh, so there's a, there's a balance whether you do an intentional or an extensional uh, definition of a word. So, why does the definition of the word definition, um, like what does that have to do with what a component is or isn't, and, and why does this matter? Well, if you've ever argued about whether a hot dog is a sandwich, an exer exercise we probably don't have enough time to cover this hour, but you could pick up during the unconference, uh, you know where both intentional and extensional definitions fall apart. A description of everything we culturally think of as a sandwich is almost impossible to get into a sweet spot, and we cannot trust the dictionary writers to decide for us if a taco is a sandwich. That's not happening. So, what we're exploring here today doesn't have clear-cut answers. You can give your opinion, but in a lot of cases, you'll be taking my flimsy word for it, and I am an unreliable narrator. Uh, on top of all this, uh, there are two schools of thought around how dictionaries should work. So prescriptivists, um, they think the dictionary is the source of truth, and language evolution is more or less like incorrect usage. Uh, they desperately want there not to be gray areas about components, sandwiches, or apples. Um, descriptivists who correctly believe the dictionary should reflect language how we use it. So. Um, they know language is messy and it changes over time, and they're up for a good hot dog debate, aren't we all? So, disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer, and this is not legal advice, but if we can agree on anything today, language could shift right under us tomorrow, and us descriptivists can take that all in stride, whereas the prescriptivists might uh, you know, need to take a nap. Okay, so back to apples, of course. Um, if I'm being honest, I made this slide thinking that there was like a good point to be made here, uh, but now I'm not so sure. Um, I guess the, the biggest takeaway is like um, a standard deviation 
um, or even like the Pareto 80-20 rule breakdown is often a good way to cover most of the things in a definition without going overboard. So getting it like 68% to 80% right is a passing grade most places. And um, yeah, don't worry, if you're an A student, uh, you're still gonna have your definition pretty close. Okay, on the other hand, this slide, um, I only included it because it popped in my head and it's, it's fun with apples. Moving on. Okay, so now we're back to something resembling a point. Um, so crab apples are fruit from trees of the same species as regular apples. They meet the definition of apple as described intentionally, but we all know the difference between a regular apple and a crab apple. An apple cider smells like apples and tastes like apples, but it's a liquid that otherwise shares no properties of an apple. And same with like a Jolly Rancher. It's not a liquid, but you, you get the idea. Um, the fruit of knowledge of good and evil from the Garden of Eden is often thought to be an apple, though that's never explicitly stated. Uh, pears are apple cousins. Um, they want to be apples so bad. Uh, Fiona Apple's last name's Apple, that's cool. Uh, apple bottom jeans might uh, share some aesthetic properties with apples, and MacBooks have a, a picture of an apple on them. So it, it's all a matter of degrees. Some things don't walk like an apple or quack like an apple, but aren't as far from appleitude as you might initially suspect. So this is all metaphor and foreshadowing, um, something to think about uh, when we're talking about other things later. All right, so Voltaire said, uh, define your terms, you'll permit me again to say, or we shall never understand one another. Um, and this quote resonates with me because arguments can sometimes be silly misunderstandings of language rather than substantive deep debates, and I think that's goofy. Um, it also lets me recommend the book Candide, which is a short, rewarding read, and you can take it from me, I'm a former librarian. Okay, so where were we? Right, apples. Um, So what I was able to find out about the etymology of the word component is that it's super old, um, seeing as it comes from Latin. Um, and a lot of old words, English-wise, are traced back to the 1600s, so uh, component has been a fixture of the language and has meant something similar to its current meaning for that whole time. And in books, uh, the word component saw a big upswing starting in the 1920s and going through 2000. Uh, but in recent years, there's been a decline, and um, it could be uh, just about the source corpus from Google Ngram Viewer um, as much as the usage of the word, so I'm not sure there. But in Drupal, we subdivide uh, lots of stuff so that we can have a modular and flexible framework. Um, unfortunately, words like block and module and plugin, they're used in vastly different ways outside of Drupal, so even within uh, other PHP kind of management systems, uh, it can be confusing to keep it all straight. So, anybody have any uh, additions to the, to the word list before we move on? Box. Box. All right. Well, I said in the in the um, session description that there would be prizes. <laughs> Noise. Here's a sticker <laughs> that lets you know if it's uh, sour cream or French onion dip, and. Of course you're apple. <laughs> so component is usually very generic, but can be descriptive. So uh, React uh, using component in this matter, manner led to two things. The first is people who uh, use React mean it in a very specific way. Um, and non-React people um, at that point started uh, pointing at stuff and, and calling it all components, which is is fine. Um, it's kind of why we're here in this room. So um, as we explore my opinion of what is and isn't a component, we can all test our assumptions of what we think component means um, and perhaps reflect on some of it and see if some of it's kind of gatekeepery. So let's explore how an accordion component is born and grows and lives. How an accordion dies is your homework assignment. All right, so I'm gonna make a note here uh, at the top. Uh, we'll be seeing things like this. Um, what I'm calling an accordion 
uh, some of you might call an accordion item or an expando or a disclosure widget. Um, and you might insist that like you, the real accordion needs two or more of these, and I disagree. So if you'd like to send me a strongly worded letter, I can give you my mailing address. Um, all right, so like any well-lived life, we start with the platonic form of the component. And we've got the hottest new game show uh, in America today. Is it a component? Woo! <laughs> yes. We don't argue with the spirit realm here. If it's in the platonic form, it's a component. Okay, so outside of the spirit realm, um, and after the Sprint Zero kickoff, the project manager slacks the technical architect who suddenly remembers to include a disclosure widget among the components. Is that a component? No, uh, yes. Yeah. Interesting. I just don't like doctors. Uh, I disagree. Um, so I don't think this is like the uh, Rhonda Burns the secret. Uh, we're not like manifesting the accordion into existence. So not quite yet, I don't think. Let's see. So then we're in JIRA, where the backlog is truth. And the PM stubs out the story with what they know about the component and then assigns it to an architect or a developer to refine. Is it a component? This side of the room. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. We've got disagreement. I like it. <laughs> Healthy debate. I'm going with no. So um, we need to put a little bit more around here. If we can call a Jira story a component, uh, we'll have to start with a little bit more description around it, which is just what we're about to do. So. This story could be touched by multiple designers, developers, QA testers, and other subject matter experts. So having good detail is an important responsibility for a JIRA story. Um, but we've refined it to ready, and this accordion is ready for work to start. Is it a component? Yes. yes. Oh. Wow, a resounding yes over here. <laughs> so it's said that the best plans rarely survive first contact with the enemy, and as good as a well-defined story is, there's bound to be things that the resulting work deviates from. So you can make the case that a well-rounded JIRA story is the specification for a component that does not and may never exist. Okay. So, this is something that looks like an accordion. It could be prototyped to open and close on click, and it could be placed in the context of other mocked up content components. I'm interested to hear. Is yes. it a component? No. Yes. No. All right. That's a, we got a lot of copies going on here. <laughs> But we've got a big but here. So it's only a component in the context of Figma. And rarely can you ship a Figma board as the final product. So maybe the notion that this is technically a component doesn't get us all that far. But we've got a yes, and not just in the spirit realm. OK. And now all the Drupal people, we're, we're getting somewhere. In parallel with those designs, the back end dev uh, does the site building portion of the build out. So for the sake of this example, the components are built using paragraphs, with accordion being a bundle with fields specified in the refined story. Other alternatives here are block entity types, custom block classes, um, you could use them like layout builder, um, or other entities in config schema that might map the necessary data. So Drupal people. Is it a component? Yes. Very, 
He's got a lot of certitude. Nope. Um, like I said, I'm an unreliable narrator and I'm very biased, so I'd almost give it a pass. But at this point, the paragraph doesn't look like the mock-up or show and hide in the expanded detail text, which is sort of the core concept of an accordion. So it's part of a larger whole in that it's a paragraph bundle, um, but it's in like a rough shape at this point. So, yes. Does, does the roughness of its shape affect the definition of whether it is a component or whether the component meets the requirements? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do y'all think? Is there a... Oh, I'll come to you. I'll <laughs> Thank you. Is there kind of a slippery slope or a sliding scale of some kind when it comes to uh, when something has been sufficiently developed to go from this is a, a thing that we can't define to we now know that we can put the word component and attach it to that. So uh, does anybody have any? Componentness is a spectrum. Interesting. Uh, uh, the component has to be usable as a component if it's just the definition, that's not the component. I buy that. Everybody else? Like usability. Okay. So, um, whether using preprocess functions, twig templates, both, or other approaches, a developer tells Drupal that the open attribute uh, goes in the details tag and the title is wrapped with a summary tag. Um, and this templating leads the paragraph to have appropriate HTML markup for the application. So sometimes templating includes splitting out the entity from the concept, but for the simplicity here, I'm just showing like, this is kind of the base level markup. So um, by the way, this is supposed to be a beginner level session. So if there are things that you're unclear about, be happy to kind of dive into more um, uh, detail here. One thing I'll point out here in this template is I love without. So if you're using a particular field in the template, uh, without can be handy. So you can use manage display in Drupal to uh, continue to uh, shape the, the content area without having to go back in and specify precise fields there. All right. Is it a component? No. no. Oh, wow. That's the spectrum is uh, it's gonna get us. Um, if you wanna, you know, meet me outside, catch me outside. You can, um, so, sight unseen. Yes. I'm being super semantic here, yeah. but is it the? Are we talking about the code? In which case, the answer is no. Or are we talking about the rendered code in the browser, which is a yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, you're bringing up a very good point. Is we have these different layers at which uh, we can construe componentness. And uh, we'll be seeing, uh, sorry, spoiler alert, uh, we'll be seeing uh, about abstraction layers, uh, which factor into um, this spectrum, this uh, amorphous definition of what a component may or may not be. So um, as, as we saw earlier with the, uh, the dictionary definition and the etymology, uh, the the word is so general that we can do a lot of things here, and so we have to uh, kind of coalesce around some truth. So, um, yeah, so sight unseen, we know there's progress. There's a details tag with a valid summary, so it, it gives something that works like an accordion item, um, even if it doesn't look like the designs are completely matched to Jira spec. Um, and this is the first time we have something in code that's component ish, component esque. It has a uh, in the scent of a component. All right, so then the front end specialist, um, they make the markup look like the mockup. Um, and sometimes this step feels like magic. Uh, I think we already know where this is going. Is it a component? Yes. Woo! Yeah, so at this point, the accordion has a paragraphs bundle with the fields it needs, so it stands alone, but is part of the overall system. It looks and works how most users expect, but it's not entirely polished. So let's do some polishing. So 
uh, I'm going to point out something in the code here, but um, maybe this component doesn't need any JavaScript to work since details is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, the details tag is really cool, um, though there are caveats. Uh, but the front end developer is a real pro, and the Jira story said to set up some JavaScript just in case. So, uh, one thing I want to point out here is uh, the closest method here on the, uh, you can use it in a lot of different elements to. Uh, uh, narrow down an event listener. So the document is what we're listening to an event for. So every click on the document is going to uh, go through this event. Um, and we're just going to only care about if uh, the bubbling of the event goes to an accordion. So um, this doesn't do a whole heck of a lot, but uh, that's a pattern that I kind of enjoy because if you decide to dynamically insert an accordion on the page after the original load, then you'll be okay. All right, is it a component? Yeah. Um, so at this point, the story can likely go to testing and get closed out this sprint. Um, it's very much a component in the sense that it's a functional part of the system but it isn't being used, so it just feels sort of aimless. And that goes to what you're saying, is uh, we have all the code in place, and in a code sense, absolutely a component. But uh, you know, if a tree falls in the forest kind of thing. We have to train people and memorialize the work. So um, there's a lot to say about even one accordion component within a whole design system, so let's commit it to paper. At this point in the sprint, we're also doing QA, checking accessibility, writing automated tests, and other good code hygiene. Um, though the documentation angle is the most visible in the process. So documentation, is it a component? Can you catch? The documentation about a component is a part of the whole of documentation. So you could make the case, based just on the uh, definition of component, that um, the documentation for accordion is a component of the overall documentation, if that's not entirely confusing. However, this isn't typically what we mean by component in the, in the context of web. OK. So storybook pattern lab and other tools, they serve a useful purpose. Um, and they also feel like something you should do when working with components. So uh, they're a place to show examples of components, give source code for implementation, um, document the options for using those components, sometimes interactively, um, and in many cases provide more documentation around usage, accessibility, and other adjacent topics. Hmm. I'm interested to this one I want to know uh, where, you, where, where we're at. So, is it a component? No. It contains the component. Yes. Anybody else? It is within the context of the Adam Lab or Storybook. Okay. You saw my notes. Okay. Um, sure. If the fully coded accordion is a component and Storybook contains the fully coded component at least once, then of course it's a component. Uh, but I just said that the documentation isn't a component and a decent chunk of each component page is documentation, so there's that. But I think the strongest argument here is that uh, you can have one or more components in your toolbox and skip the design library step and still be using components. So um, this step uh, of using something like Storybook feels componenty a lot, a very componenty, but um, it's not like a, uh, a necessary step to uh, using uh, this concept. Okay, so finally, the day comes when an accordion is needed, and it happens to be on the FAQ page, um, and there's an accordion placed on the site and not just for testing. Is it a component? Yes. Woo! Sure. <laughs> Enthusiasm. <laughs> this feels like the accordion from the earlier drawing, um, frolicking in the sunshine. 
it's the, the component has a purpose now it's it's living its life which it feels necessary even though it's not a definitional requirement for a component in the web context so, um, really glad that you're not playing the component drinking game right now um, let's see then and this is a reality of life is um, sometimes you have to rewrite code you've already written but in another dialect um, so in this case the uh, the client has a need for a marketing automation system that's outside of the main website um, and so you can see in the brief example that it's a flavor of JavaScript called an arrow function and the return value is JSX and the component name um, uh, here starts with an uppercase letter and um, the HTML that it returns looks a lot like that twig example from before. So uh, a distinction that I'd like to highlight now as we, as we continue along is that um, React is an abstraction layer. So uh, you can use a tag with an uppercase A accordion in your code and pass it props and do all the things that you do with React code. Uh, but you don't see that in the resulting HTML source. You see the HTML code that's uh, being returned from the, in that statement. So um, that details tag prints to the page. All right, so we're back from commercial break and starting round two, is it the same? You're gonna see a recurring theme here. Um, since the component is an abstraction layer and the details tag prints the screen, the browser and users can see the React component is identical to the earlier Twig one. Okay, so every 15 to 20 minutes, the React project releases a new major version that requires a partial rewrite of your code. Um, <laughs> um, and it's never quick and easy, but it's also not like painful enough to rage quit React altogether, so it's like a nice little balance. So you go in and you do rewrite number two of your component. Is it the same? Yes. Okay. Is anybody in need of an apple? No. Okay. So, yeah, hopefully. Um, as long as the rewrite doesn't cause regressions or other defects, um, the resulting component should be the same as the previous component, which was the same as the one before that. All right, so uh, let's say that a ship leaves port for a long journey, and along the way, some wooden boards break and the sailors repair the ship. Um, and the ship is away at sea for so long that eventually every board and plank and mast has been replaced. Uh, when it returns to its home port, is it the same ship as when it departed? I, I don't know why that came to mind. Uh, yeah. um, okay, so if you already have a component in the sense of a part of the whole system, um, and that part has styles and JavaScripts like our accordion example, it should be pretty straightforward to adapt it into a single directory component. The directory may need a component YAML file that uh, defines the slots and properties defined and documented earlier, which is like a new part of the code. Um, and the accordion might stand alone as its own thing, needing to be called separately from within the accordion paragraphs twig template outside that single directory. Um, but overall, this is an interesting exercise in encapsulation. So, is it the same? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're moving files around and changing some formats, but the accordion looks and works the same as it did before. So that checks out. CSS custom properties, also known as CSS variables, let you define things like brand colors one time, then refer to them elsewhere um, in your styling code, and you just have to declare it once. So um, this lets you set up maybe like 10 variables in one file and then drastically rebrand an entire design system. This is a wonderful thing for reusing of components and themes. I like this, the pattern where you're like nesting uh, the variables if you want to nerd out about that uh, during coffee exchange. Okay. Um, so, we've, uh, we've adapted and done a little rewrite to put in some CSS custom properties. Is it the same? Yep. Yes. <laughs> so, 
even with deeply nested variables, the original values that define how an accordion is styled still come through in the end. So it looks and works the same still. So in Greek mythology, Sisyphus was a mean king whom the gods punished by forcing him to push a boulder up a hill for eternity. And every time he got close to the top, the boulder would fall back down the hill and he'd have to start all over again. I'm not really sure why old Greek myths keep popping in my head. Um, okay, so we've gotten so far in here, and now we're talking about web components. Um, web components are the new hotness and a browser-supported web standard, and they're great for at least two things. So the first one is uh, if you're defining a component that isn't covered by an existing HTML tag or a simple combination of tags, um, like a copy all button or a multi-select or a responsive table or a video aspect ratio wrapper for doing responsive stuff. Um, that's a great application for a web component because um, it's transportable. And the second application would be like if you have a large enterprise organization uh, with a sophisticated design needs and a big team with a large budget and you need to ensure compliance with the design system, um, everything can be a web component. Since web components are less prone to um, accidental bad styling than regular HTML markup, they're great for controlling the experience within them. Here we go. Got, I don't even know if I remember which rewrite we're on. Is it the same? No. No. I'm talking. <laughs> nice. So much. All right. I want to hear some justification. Why is it not a, the same? Depending on how you make the web component, it will behave very differently. You create a web component to be closed and thus not allow the web component to consume styles from the global context. And in that way, the component is very much not the same as it once was. Each development is different. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's oh. how the user uses it. Oh, interesting. So that's going back to. Uh, uh, the code versus usage. Okay, interesting. You guys have all the right guesses. <laughs> need to need to find a way to surprise y'all. Um, you like apples? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man. I ate yeah. the first one you gave me already. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and oh yeah, the share. I still have um, some stickers left if uh, if there's any good. Uh, Oh. <laughs> Hit him in the hands. <laughs> All right, so the bears are going to draft. Sorry. Uh, yeah, going to what uh, y'all said, at the very least, there's a new tag wrapping the accordion. Um, and remember in the React component um, that it was an abstraction that still prints out the same HTML? With web components, one uh, interesting difference is that the abstraction part doesn't disappear. Um, it stays there wrapping all that markup inside, kind of. Um, and I'd be fine if you see it as like a distinction without a difference because there's the different modes. Um, so I've got to get in my controversy somewhere. So what is a web component? Um, if you use that exact phrase, web component, as opposed to just the word component in the context of web, um, you're talking about something specific, um, as seen in action at the bottom of the slide. Um, so the HTML web standard now includes custom elements, which is a way to name your own HTML tags. And the main rule is that the tag has to have a hyphen in it, it's fun. Um, otherwise, that's just an invalid markup. So. Um, Along with that tag naming scheme for custom elements, web components also include uh, using some JavaScript to register the element, uh, and then a way to template the insides of the component um, and put the reusable markup in something called the shadow DOM. That's where Barb from Stranger Things is. Um, <laughs> a, uh, and then there's like this special barrier with the shadow DOM. So um, the, where the regular DOM ends and the shadow DOM begins, um, styling and some scripting that um, only certain rules can cross it. So CSS variables very easily get through, but uh, that random style you wrote three sprints ago that infected the rest of the site, uh, that can't affect the components and sites for the most part. And um, 
the other piece of it is the there's a consistent way to pass information into the component. Um, so simple values can be included in attributes, which are like uh, you might know them as props, uh, while markup can be like sent in using slots. So uh, it's difficult kind of to see, but uh, slot equals default, and then in there there's a paragraph. So that would be a way to pass uh, something into that template. All right, man, I'm flying here. Um, so I'm gonna keep this slide up until we get at least one example. So you're gonna have to talk. Um, what else can we learn about components on the web from just how the word component is used in real life? A component is a unit of a larger organism. It can be used, small components can be used to comprise a larger system, just like a car engine. Okay. Man, I should have bought more apples. Okay. The, is there an industry or um, some, something not web related where you remember hearing the word component before I said it 600 times today? Stereo. Stereo. Great. Roofing. Roofing. Computers, like Apple Computer. Right. <laughs> All right. Dig it. Well, okay. We're getting towards the end here. So um, I kind of came up with this concept for this presentation. It, yeah, this didn't just happen, weirdly. Um, because like a few years back, I was on this project and another developer wanted to do everything in React. And I don't have anything like particularly against React, uh, but like I wasn't a fan of that idea for everything to be that way. And we can get into that because we're going to have some time left over. Um, but I wanted to justify my position. And um, as we've kind of discussed, there's the front end piece of it, there's the code piece of it um, to an end user. Uh, the HTML and all that stuff doesn't really matter as long as you can do the thing that you want and especially for like a content editor if you're putting in those fields you could swap out the implementation of the component and it would still do the uh, largely the same thing sort of uh, so um, <laughs> eventually um, instead of like making this slideshow for them I voted with my feet and they're probably still making uh, React pages with big payloads and stuff to this day, um, but uh, if plain old HTML and CSS are functionally equivalent to a React component, um, then in my mind there's nothing wrong using old-fashioned markup alongside the trendy new technology this season. Of course, there's a benefit, uh, there's an economy of scale to having everything on the team, everybody on the team uh, doing things the same way, and that's a, a big reason for making component libraries and design systems in the first place. So. Um, take my sincere desire to just write HTML the rest of my career with a grain of salt, um, since your mileage may vary. So, um, along this journey, I came up with a few other controversial opinions, mostly to confound your expectations, uh, though you're wily and you came up with the right answers for all of these. Uh, hopefully now we have a greater appreciation for the world of components, even if we disagree. Um, so, with that, let's see. Oh, um, just a quick plug here. This doesn't have single directory components, web components, React, Storybook, or Layout Builder, um, but you will find an aggressively component-based starter kit with solid bones and time-saving tricks. Kaylee okay, knows. <laughs> um, all right, uh, I'm going to skip and show you the last two slides here real quick, and then we can come back to questions. So. Uh, uh, my stepdaughter wanted to be part of the uh, presentation, so we got a little awesome. <laughs> and um, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, remember that contribution day is tomorrow. All right, we all talked out. Yes. Do you find that single directory components is in line with your philosophy of like if you can make a component with just CSS, you know, like web first languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. That's a good thing. Certainly is, yeah. Uh, I think one piece of single directory components that we need to flesh out is like all the talk about uh, CSS variables. Um, there are things that are going to be at a global scope rather than um, encapsulated in the single directory. So 
um, having sort of a front end architecture that supports both this is the standalone thing and it's in the larger context or larger ecosystem is important. But yeah, there's nothing that precludes on its own uh, to being able to use plain old HTML and CSS and JavaScript. So that's a, that's a great question. Happy with having components in a theme rather than in modules. If it, uh, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Sometimes it, it really depends on the use case. There are there are legitimate reasons to declare base components or something for um, maybe a design system at the module level, and then override them in the theme. That's sort of the pattern that we've uh, glommed onto as a framework. So, yeah, very good questions. Yes. Are components for the maker or the consumer? So what I mean by that is do we make components for the people who are developing and creating content or are components intended for the end user to use? Also an excellent question. Uh, and that kind of gets also into uh, developer experience versus uh, user experience. So, um, And that's one of those uh, reacty criticism type things. It's like, uh, Am I doing all of this work um, and using this particular system because it makes my life easier or it makes somebody else's life easier? Um, what I found, and uh, your mileage may vary, is components make logical sense for content entry specifically. So um, even taking a lot of that stuff out of the equation, uh, if you want to be able to have a consistent uh, experience and all of those things, be able to test and all that, uh, it helps to use components in, in that sense, even if uh, you have a very loose idea of what a component is and it's you're pasting in some markup into a WYSIWYG or something like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know that the, that somebody has ever landed on a page and gone, oh, look at all these components, I'm glad that's there. Like, it's, it's for people who are doing content entry or doing development, I think. Uh, what do you think? But no, I agree with you. I think it's all for the you know for the for the entity that is making things to be able to to have a consistent user experience, a consistent developer experience, you know, and like that's why whenever like we talk to clients about you know design systems, we're not talking. We, we talk a little bit about how it benefits the users, but it benefits the users because the site editors can do things faster and focus on what is better you know for the company. Than necessarily otherwise. Absolutely. I, I, I don't have any um, uh, opinions about games, so I can't help you with that. That's okay. okay. I've got lots. <laughs> I have lots of opinions about games. Uh, has anybody had some experience uh, using a component system or a design system or uh, a library of that nature in their organization and found some transformation? Please, please go ahead. I'll just raise your hand. Storybook. Through um, we use the emulsify uh, starter theme for the vast majority of our sites now. Nice. Yeah. Big plug for four kitchens. Yeah. All right. You should talk on the emulsify lead. Oh, right on. Nice yeah. to meet you. Thanks for an amazing, <laughs> an amazing project. It's been a lifesaver. It's awesome. Thank you. Anybody I else? don't have any apples for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. There's, there's a couple hanging out over at that table. I think so. Uh, if you have a craving, yes. We have a uh, pattern, aging pattern lab set up. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get out of, it, out of that corner right now. Probably storybook, I guess. Uh, would you be taking on like a larger refactor uh, to do something like SDC or something like that, or is it shifting from pattern lab to? That could make a very good uh, unconference uh, topic if anybody else is interested. Oh, yeah. All right. Well. Uh, oh my goodness! Barely used, didn't use my time. What's up? One last question. Yes. So, um, when it's by itself, just text and a reveal, that's a disclosure. Hmm. An accordion is a collection of disclosures. So you need my mailing address. Right? <laughs> yes, yes. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Sure. Um, here's my counterpoint. Um, because it's expanding and contracting, and that's what an accordion instrument does, um, a single element to me can be considered an accordion, even though it doesn't have like two sides the way that um, the instrument does. So uh, 
tactile, like the the tactile experience of it seems on its own to be that way. But if you're if you're thinking about it as each bellow in an accordion yeah. uh, is a, an individual element, I understand the argument. I'm being facetious, but you know, <laughs> don't bring your hot dog music into my argument. <laughs> uh, if you want to have a conversation with me, you have to define your terms. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did an okay job to define it. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, there's, there's a certain amount of fun in being pedantic. So when I said earlier that um, there are arguments that are largely just misunderstandings about language and that that's goofy, um, I may not have been um, entirely forthcoming because I really do and like I do enjoy uh, goofy arguments like that. So. <laughs> Me too. Yes. Yeah, what is the next word you're gonna pick for this presentation? <laughs> I'm dying to know. Uh, I'm no longer welcome here, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, not true. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. We'll see what the next uh, uh, big trend is that I can uh, uh, be all ornery about. <laughs> well, hey, uh, you've got a little bit of extra time. I uh, wish I could have filled it up more with some crude drawings. So uh, thank you very much for your time.